Hey everyone, it's Sean, and in this video series, I'm going to be showing you guys how to format the start of a book. We're going to be covering things like how to import um, large portions of type into InDesign, setting up paragraph styles, some character styles, um, creating uh, chapter sort of bookmarks, formatting a table of contents using the table of contents tool and tabs, um, and we're going to be going over some front matter stuff uh, and reorganizing and renumbering pages in InDesign. I know that's a lot to get through, but we're going to section it out into smaller chunks again as usual. Um, so let's just dive right in. Uh, first things first, I'm going to create a new document in InDesign. So I'm going to go to File, New, New Document. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to print and I'm actually going to use one of these print presets for a change. Um, I just know that the A5 letter document uh, is about the size of a regular trade paperback, um, a soft cover paperback, for example. Uh, and for this to work, I'm going to set it to inches. We need to have our orientation as portrait. I definitely want facing pages on and we're going to hit primary text frame. Uh, next thing is I'm going to leave the columns at one column, the margins, let's hit preview so I can actually check and see that things are looking okay. Margins, uh, they could be a little bit different. So for the margins, what I want to do is unlink uh, our margin here and we're going to put in some different values. So for the top, I want to have 0.7087. And I'm just going to copy that number and I'm going to paste it into the inside. There we go. And then for the bottom, I would like to have a slightly different number. So we're going to hit 0 0.6, 6299. And again, I'm just going to copy this, copy, and we're going to paste it on the outside. Cool. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's just double check. Lovely. Wonderful. So for those of you keeping score, the inside is on the left of the page here. And the reason why we have a larger margin on the inside is because when you actually go to format this book, you need a lot more space um, for what's called the creep or the amount of space that each page sort of eventually will take up in the spine. Um, on the outside, you don't need as wide a margin because it's closer to the edge of the page and people are used to reading like closer to the edge of the page. Uh, bleed, we'll just make our standard eighth of an inch and we don't need to worry about slug. So that's great. Let's hit create. So if we look back at our example, uh, you'll notice that there, let me just scroll down, there's about eight pages of type um, going on here. And uh, to get to that, I've given you guys a project folder. I gave you guys a project folder and in it, uh, sorry, it was just down there. I just had to make sure I had everything set up. Um, so in the uh, project folder, it's called the subtle art of not giving an F uh, formatted folder. In it, you'll find similar to the last project, there's a Z final. This is my final version of the document. It's there in case you guys get stuck, uh, but try to avoid using it if you can. Um, and in it, you'll find that there is a document here called chapter one dot doc. And what we want to do is we want to place that document in there. So what I'm going to do is in InDesign, I'm going to hit Command D so that I can place it. And uh, I am going to navigate to that folder. Just give me a sec here. Week three. Uh, formatted. There we go. And I'm going to hit Chapter 1. Now, before you hit open down here, um, if you do not see this panel, uh, you need to click on this options button. And when you click on it, you'll see that there's another box here called show import options. And we want to hit show import options. So we're going to hit open. And InDesign will open up uh, another dialog box called show import options. And there's a few things that we need to do in here first. Um, we can leave everything up here for now because this document doesn't really contain any of this information. It doesn't contain a table of contents, footnotes, and notes, or an index. So we're good there. Uh, we definitely want to use typographer's quotes. Um, there's a difference between typographer's quotes and what is called prime marks. Um, sometimes people get these confused. So this will just make sure that uh, we're using the proper quotations. 
And what I want to do is remove styles and formatting from text and tables. Uh, and I will just, con we can leave that because there is no table to convert and we can hit OK. So when you hit OK, uh, it will automatically load the uh, typography, the type, the body copy, sorry, um, into our text frame. And that's because we had our text frame selected right off the get go. And if we look and open up our pages panel, you'll notice that it is automatically created seven pages of type. So if we just scroll down, we can see there's all the type there. And I'm just going to quickly open up that document in Word. Um, let me just see if I can find it. Chapter one. Here we go. So here's chapter one. And I'm going to actually start a new document for a second. You guys don't have to follow this along with me if you don't want to, but I'm just going to show you guys a couple of things. Um, the first thing we can actually look at is right here in this document. And what we can tell right off the bat in Word compared to Illustrator is our Word document has don't try in bold and in InDesign, it's not bold. It's just regular right? Um, the reason why that didn't carry over is because we hit remove styles or like remove formatting options from Word when we imported this. So it just imports it in as basic type. But if I go and create this new document, new document, we're going to use the exact same settings, um, except I'm not going to have facing or I'm not going to have a primary text frame. I'm going to get rid of the primary text frame and I'm going to show you guys a couple of things. So we're going to hit create. Cool. And if I draw out a text box within our margins here, draw it out. There we go. And now I go to hit command D or file place and it opens up my dialog box. I'm going to hit chapter one. I'm going to hit open. I had show import options uh, checked. So this dialog box shows up and I'm going to hit preserve styles and formatting from text and tables. We're going to hit okay. And now you can see it brings it in. It's uh, Arial for one, gross. Um, and it actually kept my bold formatting here. You can see Arial bold right there. And the next thing that you might notice is we have some overset text and it also only created a single page. So this is a problem on several counts. Um, one being the overset text. To get rid of overset text, uh, what it's trying to communicate with you is that there is additional type in this text box that is not um, present within view. And so to get rid of it, what we have to do is I just added two new pages. I'm going to switch over to my selection tool and I'm going to double click on this red box. Actually, one second. Okay, great. So I double clicked on the red box. I have this um, sort of symbol that obviously has a bunch of type next to it. And I'm going to drag out another text frame. And, you know, the type continues onto the next page. It's all well and good. But what you'll notice is there's another red box. So if I click on it once and I bring it over to the next page, and I can keep formatting like this, but there's another box here, another set of overset text. And any, if we've learned anything from this document is that there's going to be seven pages of text. So now imagine you actually had all of the body copy of a legit novel, hundreds and hundreds of pages. You would cry if you had to set up a document in this method. So when you're setting up a document that is going to be hundreds of pages or dozens of pages for that matter, make sure you include a primary text frame um, if you're going to be setting it up in the format of something like a novel because there is no other way to go back in and sort of fix this mistake. It's something that you need to make sure is present from the get-go. You cannot go to file document setup and add in a primary text frame. Um, I don't think the option will be there. Uh, it looked like it was grayed out. So yeah, you see, it's grayed out. You cannot add in a primary text frame after you've created a document, unfortunately. So that's just one thing to be aware of. And that's just another example of bringing things in with formatting options versus um, just as raw text. So uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at here is uh, creating a paragraph style for our main um, body copy. 
And to do that, what I want to do is I'm just going to highlight the first paragraph and I'm only going to work within this. And uh, I believe I'm going to use um, a nice serif typeface for this. I'm probably going to use Georgia. Georgia, I'm going to use Georgia regular. Um, I think Georgia is a typeface that comes baked into InDesign. I could be wrong. It might come in uh, through... Um, some other means like Adobe fonts or maybe Google fonts. Uh, so if you don't have it, um, you could either go digging around for it or you could just create a nice, um, or you could just use a nice serif typeface. It's up to you. Uh, but I am going to uh, make it about size, I want nine and a half, not nine, nine and a half. There we go. I'm going to increase the letting to not 15, maybe 13 seems fine. Uh, left aligned looks okay. I'm going to go, so if you guys switch over to your paragraph tab here, I'm going to use the space after feature, and I'm going to add an eighth of an inch um, as my paragraph, or yeah, as my paragraph sort of break. Um, and that is probably about it. Uh, you know what? Actually, I think I'm also going to add an indent. So let's go with yeah, that looks about okay. Lovely. So with this still highlighted, what we can do is we can click new paragraph style. And now our paragraph style will uh, analyze all the information from the text that's highlighted. And it will create a paragraph style based off of all of that information. You'll notice our indents and spacing are already set. We didn't change the colors, so we don't have to worry about that. There's no tabs yet or anything there, so we don't need to worry. But um, it did keep all the information. So we can rename this as uh, body copy. There we go. And we can hit OK. And now what I'd like to do is hit Command A. And it will select all the type on all the pages. And we can create body copy. Uh, what I'm going to do is apply body copy, clear all overrides. There we go. And it just got rid of that extra little override section. I don't really know why that was being caused. It probably has to do something up here. Um, but if we go look on page six, uh, you'll see that everything was um, everything was adjusted all the way down to the end of our uh, type section here. So to quickly just make this look like a bit more of a book, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add... Uh, sorry, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to add a couple of extra pages here, um, lovely, and I'm going to drag page two in front of page one, and now when I go up to page one, it's blank, this is going to be for our cover, and I'm actually going to drag page two outside of page three, so it's on the right side of the novel for where the novel actually has to start. Um, <clears throat> so to import the uh, title, the cover page, or the cover of the book. I'm going to hit Command D, uh, File Place. I'm going to go under Links and I'm going to hit Front Cover. I'm going to open this guy up. Um, we had Show Import Options on, so that's why this dialog box is showing up. I can hit OK. And for some reason it didn't want to. There we go. So I just hit Command Z and it seemed to have brought the, uh, the Place option back. I know that this is sacrilege, but for the purposes of this book, I'm just going to um, optically stretch this cover. Please don't hate me. There we go. Good Lord, I know. I should not be doing that. But since this is just a test run and a trial, a tutorial, it's not the end of the world. Um, all right, cool. So the next thing that we can take a look at is uh, creating our um, sort of chapter uh, sort of layout and our heading here for our um, actual chapter title. If we scroll through our example, you'll see here we have chapter and then the number underneath the chapter and then the name of the chapter. Um, this is happening on a few different layers just to make you guys aware and we have a bunch of different paragraph styles to sort of help create this. So the first paragraph style that we're going to create to sort of help achieve this is going to be uh, a paragraph style called chapter. So to accomplish that, let's go back over to our document. Um, I'm going to just delete this number one. 
I'm going to highlight the word chapter, and I'm going to start making some formatting adjustments. I'm going to make sure it's centered. I'm going to change this from uh, Georgia to um, century, century Gothic bold, and I'm going to up the size of it. I'm going to increase the tracking of it. I want this to be pretty wide, something like that. Cool. Um, yeah, that looks about right. So now we can hit the plus icon under paragraph styles. We can rename this to chapter and we don't need to make any other formatting adjustments for now. So we can hit OK. Lovely. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to format this one. Uh, this is going to be called chapter title eventually, but for now I can actually apply the chapter paragraph style to it. I'm going to make sure I don't have an extra space lingering around. I'm going to put this in all caps. I'm actually going to decrease the tracking uh, just to make it a little bit tighter. Looks great. Uh, we're going to hit new paragraph style and I'm going to rename this to um, chapter title. Cool. So if we come back up here to uh, chapter, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the paragraph style. I'm going to go into indents and spacing and I'm going to drastically increase the space after. Probably to something like that. Yeah, to about an inch. That looks nice. Cool. And to give this a little bit of extra space, I'm actually going to lower this text frame down a bit so it's not as close to the top of the page. This looks great. And let's just flip back over to our example. So our, in our example, the number one is sitting underneath the word chapter. And to make that happen, what we can do is we can go up to layers. We can rename layer one as body copy. And we can create a new layer. We're going to call this chapter numbers. Cool. And we're going to drag this underneath our body copy layer. Make sure you're selected on it. We're going to use T uh, to grab the type tool and we're going to draw out a text box. We're going to type in the number one. <laughs> and now we're going to have to make some formatting adjustments. So uh, again, I want to use century. Century Gothic Pro Bold. This is probably going to have to be somewhere in the line of about 80 points. It actually looks pretty good size for me. And uh, I want to make sure it's centered. Cool. And now under color, uh, to get a gray tone, I just need to adjust the tint. So I'm going to make this about 20%. There we have it. Uh, this text box probably needs to be a little bit wider for when we start getting double digit chapter numbers. Uh, but what you can do is you can just sort of anchor that below the word chapter and uh, we can make sure that this is um, aligned to page. Make sure it's in the center, something like there. And I know that looks really funky, eh? For some reason, this doesn't look properly aligned. So you might just want to optically align it um, to the word chapter instead. I guess if you want to get serious about it, it would be about there. Cool. So that's chapter one. It's called Don't Try. And uh, you know what we can actually do really quick? We can highlight the number one. We can go over to character styles. We can create a new one and we can call this uh, chapter, chapter number. We can hit OK. Because this is one character, we don't need to create an entire paragraph style for it. It's really overkill to do that, but a simple character style will do the trick. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to be going over things like front matter, table of contents, material, things like that. We're going to add some folio tabs and whatnot. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.